Good morning, everyone. It's nice to see people actually in here. And it's just so awesome that soon it's going to be opening up and we'll be able to have more here. You know, I just think it's, it's so cool that what the enemy thought he could just kill the church, we are opening up into every home because we're live streaming now. So what the enemy wanted to use for evil, God is turning around for the good because he cannot kill the church. The enemy cannot kill the church because we are going to see the victory. So I just want everyone that's here just to stand. We're just going to worship him. Here we go. That drowns sorrows, there is an ocean. And deeper than fear, the tide is rising, rising. There is a current stirring deep inside, it's overflowing. From the heart of God, the flood of heaven, crashing over us, the tide is rising, rising.
You took what the enemy meant for evil and turned it to good. Yes. Hallelujah. It's a good song Our for God right is now, a good eh? God. Amen. Amen. Yeah, it is a great song right now, Kathy. Thank you and team. All this stuff that the enemy would like to use for evil, God is turning it for good. As Absolutely. we've said week after week, the body of Christ is not getting weaker, it's getting stronger. Hallelujah, Jesus. And it's awesome. So thank you for joining the broadcast. Hundreds of people around the world watching this. God bless you in New Life Church, Scotland, and Belize, and, and over into Africa, our, church, our affiliate churches, and, and across Canada. God bless you all. Hallelujah. Can't name them all right now, but uh, uh, we love you all. God bless you. I hope you're doing really, really well. Hey, I got I made us a slide here, Kimmy. I want, oh, I want to show you here. Dear. Look at this. Come join us. There it is. Come join us. Come yes. and join us. Because we are open. <laughs> We're open for business. Uh, on Friday, they have initiated stage two. And what that means Lord is Jesus. that there's on, I was going to bring the paper with me, but I forgot it. So on stage two, uh, it says no cap on worship services as long as we can social distance. Yeah. So next week, we are open for business. We are inviting everybody to come everybody back to Everybody, come on back to church. Come uh, back. We have, to set up this, we have to take this week to set up the sanctuary again yeah. and figure out how we're going to get on stage and still social hey, distance and all that here, kind of here's stuff. Here's the thing. I was, I was just, I was just uh, talking to a beautiful young lady this morning explaining it. So I have this whole explanation oh, rehearsed. Oh, do you now? Yeah. The, the cohorts. Oh, the cohorts. Cohorts. Co not, yeah, cohorts? Co is that cohorts. how you say it? Cohorts <laughs> is when you're going to rob a bank, you need a cohort. No, a cohort. Cohort. I don't know. A group. A group that a group you that interact you with. with a lot of, of you know, f uh, family or people you interact yep. with where you know they haven't been ill, whatever. You can sit together. You, you can, can sit be together. together. You can Absolutely. go out and have fun yep. together. So yep. we're going to have the chairs all set up back to normal right now for the broadcast. It's all funky in here. We got everything moved around. But we're setting everything back up to normal this yep. week. And we're asking everybody to come. Yeah, come on, Victor. Come. Uh, we're asking everybody to come One to, is to cluster. It's cluster. Cluster? Cluster. With your family okay. or your or your cohorts. Yes. Courts. <laughs> Friends your that horts. you hang with that Let's, aren't sick. We'll just call them the horts. The if horts. you have horts. <laughs> Join with your hearts in, in, uh, and plus, so it makes room for other people. And yeah. we'll have the chairs set in rows like normal. Yeah. And then uh, we're just asking that don't sit behind somebody that isn't right. your heart. That's right. That's right. Right? If you're not part of their heart, move over. Yeah. And, and, you know? <laughs> I have you know, no idea. I'm going to look that word up. I think you better. <laughs> for the first couple of weeks, you know, it's going to be kind of fun to figure everything well, out. Sure. Uh, we're going to we're going to have kids ministry. We're going to start that again and again. That's something we're just going to have to work with. So everybody have some patience as we try to yeah. figure out everything that we have to do to make sure yeah. that you're safe. Uh, be there'll good. be you know the sanitation centers so you can keep your hands sanitized. The kids can wash their hands lots. The only thing we can't do is open up the nursery yet for two and under. But parents yeah. can still take their own child back there. Yes. So, and as long as uh, they can social distance in that room, or if they're a family that works together, horts. then that's fine. The, I don't even want to if say that word. <laughs> Take your favorite hort with you. Oh, <laughs> uh, you've had too much coffee this morning. Too much coffee. All anyway, right. so we're going to get back on track next week. We'll be sending out texts and everything to everybody. So everybody, come on back to church. I know it's kind of a weird time because now people yeah. are heading out for summer holidays. Summer. So we don't know what the summer is going to look like, but everybody is welcome back. So come on back and yeah. let's start having we, church we miss you. again. Miss oh you. my gosh. We yes. Yeah. Absolutely. And, uh, and thank you for everybody that's here today and, yeah. and our production team as always and the worship team. They have team. worked Praise so hard. God. Hey, uh, Kayla, Kayla, we just want a little shout out to you yeah. today. Uh, is it, uh, Her grandpa passed grandpa, away this Grandpa, weekend. yeah. I'm so yeah. Sorry. And uh, God sorry, bless you, honey. Kayla. We're, we'll be praying for you and your family this week. Praise God. Hallelujah. Are we ready to go forward here? Yep. All right. All right. I got, some, I got some more stuff here. Hallelujah. Look at this. Look at this here. I want to put this up. This is out of a message Bible in 2 Corinthians chapter 9, verse 7. Look what it says. I want each of you to take plenty of time to think it over. <laughs> yeah, this, is, this is the thing. We tend to, we tend to uh, make 
uh, given an offerings, you know, we tend to make it, oh, it's, it's just quick and, you know, uh, whatever. But, uh, but uh, uh, <laughs> we should take our time Absolutely. and think it over. That, and look at here. Let me go back to this. I want you to, you to take plenty of time to think it over and make up your own mind what you will give. That will protect you against sob stories and arm twisting. <laughs> now, how good. much, oh, Lord. See, this is, this is special to me. I, I, I like this passage of Scripture because we've always been so careful not to put out sob stories. I, I don't think we have ever got up on front of uh, on a Sunday morning in, in 25 years and given a sob story of how we have need. I want you to know, in 25 years, Life Church has had need, but it's self-inflicted because we're always moving building. forward. Yeah, That's we're right. always building yep. something. But to say that we've been in a place of devastation or uh, that we have faithful, faithful God people, faithful. And, and, mm -hmm. and it's been absolutely awesome. So here, let, let me look at this here. No sob stories, no arm twisting. So this isn't about arm twisting. God loves it when the giver delights in the giving. Hallelujah, Jesus God can pour on the blessings in astonishing ways so that you're ready for anything, not just re and everything, more than just ready to do what needs to be done. Come on. Now, that is a description of Life Church. Out of your faithfulness, we haven't just met the needs. We've, we've been able to do things that are crazy, really, for for. <laughs> An organization awesome. our size to, uh, if, if, if we had time, I would take you through the numbers or sometime when you're around me, ask me, I'll, I'll explain it to you. It's absolutely a God story it how is. we have made it from, you know, leaving the mining industry and mm -hmm. selling our house to get started to what God has done through, through you, through uh, all yeah. God's people being yes. so faithful. Oh, it's absolutely so faithful. amazing. So we're, we're ready for anything and everything, and hallelujah, everything. Jesus, right. God always prepares <laughs> us. And you know, it's so, after 25 years, it was still, you, you have this pandemic, we go, oh no, now what are we gonna do? And I just gotta stop and say, God has been faithful. And when this hit, our worship team back then, remember you, you, they were saying, all my life, you have been faithful. Yes. And I'd be driving down the street and I'd break out in tears and singing that song, all my life, God, you've been faithful. So all faithful. my life, you've been so, so, so good. Hallelujah. Mm -hmm. And I just want to, I just, uh, this is an arm twisting. It's not mm -hmm. a sob story. It's a victory shout. Hallelujah. In the midst of adversity in, and the world is shutting down, yeah. Life Church is still rising up. Hallelujah, Absolutely. Jesus. Uh, God so is here's, faithful. Here, look at, look at, where did it come from? Well, look at, let's go back to this scripture here just for a second. Verse 10, 2 Corinthians 9, 10. Now may he who supplies seed to the sower, where'd the seed come from? Well, God gives the oh. seed to the sower. Oh, am I on the wrong one? Yep. Oh, there you go. You are. Oh, maybe I didn't put that one on there. I'll just read it. He, he who supplies seed, it's hard to get good help this day, these days, isn't it? <laughs> I was sure I put that on there. <laughs> I put I printed it out here. It's good. Let me just read it to you. Second Corinthians nine ten. It says, oh, "Now may he who supplies seed to the sower." I mean, where, where's the seed come from? God doesn't just deposit it into the church bank account. He deposits it, deposits it into your bank account and allows you to make decisions and and to be generous. And through that. You know what Pastor Mel Davis used to teach us? Water can't flow through a pipe without getting the pipe wet. Right. So when you're providing for God's house, you get a blessing as it mm -hmm. passes through your hands and passes through. So God supplies seed to the sower and bread for food supply and multiply the seed you have sown. That is so true. It is, isn't it? We have seen it. You know, if I was to sit down, I was telling somebody the other day, if I was yep. to sit down and try to put on paper... Yeah. All that the Lord has blessed us with, it won't add up. It, it just it's doesn't make sense. It's over and above. It doesn't make sense because it's God. Like, you, you can look at where we're at as an organization and divide it into the months and weeks that we've existed, you know, 25 years. And, and it, it adds up to more than our monthly 
average giving. It, it just doesn't make sense. Because God multiplies. God multiplies. And it. we have so seen it in our lives, and you can s you see it in your lives. I, we've heard testimony after yeah. testimony. So of praise what God. God. Has done. Thank you for being faithful yeah. with the seed that God has placed in your hand, because it is producing a harvest. All that you're seeing here, and all our locations around the world, are because of the faithfulness Absolutely. of the sowers. Yes. You. Hallelujah, yes. Jesus. So I just wanted to celebrate that today as we go on. So Kathy's got another song ready for us here, and, uh, and we're going to go into that song as we receive it. But tell them a little bit about how we're going to be giving. We're, we're, we're setting up, we have right today, we have yes. uh, offering stations. Yep. And uh, we're going to continue a version of that next week as people come back, aren't we? Yes. And then what else can they do? Well, we've got the e-transfer. And we're just suggesting that everybody for now, if you could please still e-transfer, it just makes it easier for everyone. I mean, yes, you can bring your tithe and offerings here, absolutely. And we're going to change things up a little bit next week uh, so it's easier for people to give so we can continue with social distancing and all that kind of stuff. So you can give at life dot. Fort Saskatchewan, let's see, I can't even give, see it. Give, give dot, dot, give dot. lifechurchfs at gmail.com. You should look up there. It's, it's bigger hard, letters it's up there. See. You'll be all right up there. <laughs> give dot lifechurchfs <laughs> at gmail.com. Gmail It'll go directly in the church account. You can mail it to the church address up there, or you can just drop it off to our house. At our so home. whatever works. But we also have the baskets up there for those that are in the sanctuary that would want to yeah. give. Uh, Yes, and again, we just thank you so much for your giving. It's, it's blessed our lives more than you could ever imagine. Amen. And so uh, right now, Kath and the team has taken us into another wonderful worship song. Enjoy the worship and just take a moment to pray over your seed and, uh, and to ask God, what, what did it say? I want each of you to take plenty of time to think it over and make up your own mind what you'll give. Make up your mind as God ministers to you and sow a seed by faith to return a harvest, not just to the church, but into your life as well. In Jesus' name, amen. Come on. Kathy, take it away. Alone in my soul.
My savior displayed on a criminal's cross The darkness rejoiced as though heaven had lost Then Jesus arose with our freedom in That's when death was resting With death was arrested and my, my life. life began. Hallelujah, it's so Jesus. so good. So what's happening here is last week we taught, we started into Luke 4 yeah. on the temptation of Jesus. And we just had lots to say. So we kind of got through the first one, kind of. Yeah. Yeah. So I'm just going to give you a little recap. Yeah. And so. You just took so much time. <laughs> yeah, I know, right? <laughs> I have witnesses here. Yeah. <laughs> so the key about uh, the temptation of Jesus is that we have to know and understand that he was led into the wilderness by the Spirit, okay? This wasn't something the devil dragged him into or drug him into. This was something that the Spirit of God led him into. And the cool thing about that is that when Jesus, uh, Jesus lived his life as a Spirit-filled man, just like us. Mm. And, you know, yep. he never let the fact yep. that he was God interfere right. with his ministry. And so when he went into the wilderness, as he was led there, he went in as a spirit-filled, empowered man, just like right. you and I are. Right. And it says that after, first of all, he identified with the sinners in baptism. 
And then he identified with, with us in temptation. And now it's in uh, Hebrews 4.15, it says, For we do not have a high priest who cannot sympathize with our weakness, mm. but it was all, but was in all points tempted as we are, yet without sin. Without sin. So everything that we go through, Jesus has been through. So he knows exactly how we are feeling. And, it, and that, that sin is not without immorality. It's not right. just talking about he didn't have a girlfriend, he didn't, right. you know, that kind of yeah. stuff. It's sin means he didn't fall short. Fall short he didn't the miss the mark right. in, in anything. Yes. I mean, every requirement mm -hmm. you could think of in the law and whatever, Jesus mm -hmm. didn't abolish yeah. it. He fulfilled it. Wow. Well, and simply because by choice. By choice. By choice, yeah. being empowered by the Holy yeah. Spirit. So then that says that by choice, yes. empowered by the Holy Spirit, that we can do the you same thing. You and I thing. can too, yeah. Absolutely. Yep. So the first temptation, now you've got to realize that, you know, the devil is cunning. And, and the, the thing that I found when I was reading through this is that Jesus was tempted for 40 days, mm. not just the 40th day. He had fasted right. for those 40 days, but he had been also tempted for those whole 40 days. And on the 40th day, then the enemy comes in and just... Just like him, he wants to get us in our weakest moment. Because it says Jesus was hungry. And the fact that he was hungry, it was t calling to the end of his fast. But because Luke was a doctor and he wrote this, he was saying yep. that the reason that Jesus got hungry is because his body was starting to die. It was mm. starting to go into starvation. So then that's when the enemy took that uh, prompting and he said, yeah. opportunity, and he said, okay, now. So wow. he tempted him and said, he said, if you're the son of God, and one of the commentaries and one of the translations yep. also said, um, uh, if you're the son of God, but it could be also translated, since, since you're the son you of God, he said, command this stone to turn into bread. And it's so cool because Jesus says, it is written. Yeah. And he says, it is written, man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word of God. And so what the enemy was doing, and through all these temptations, is he is trying to get Jesus to display his identity. Yeah. And it wasn't going to work. He didn't buy into it. No. He didn't buy into it. Not but at he, all. But here's the thing. It's the same for you and I and, and all of us here and, and watching today. It's the same today. He, he challenges our identity. Yes. And, and we could say, well, if you are, you know, prove yourself. Mm -hmm. Or since you are. But well, either way, he's challenging our identity. And so I got an answer for you today, devil. Hallelujah, Jesus. Yes, I am a child of God. Amen. Yes, I am. Look, look, I wrote this down here. The, if you are a Christian, then, then use the power to meet your own need. Yes, I am a child of God. Right. And yes, I do have the power in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. And yes, I should use it to bring things into order. Come on. Absolutely but not by compromise. Right. It's by standing on the true word of God. Hallelujah, yes. Jesus. And if we do that, see the, the test then, come on, not by compromise or, or the word or changing the timing. You know, you've got to be in time with the word of God too. And, and, but then the test starts to define, not to destroy. It starts to define mm -hmm. and strengthen. It gets yeah. rid of all the, all the, 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 you know, the stubble, <laughs> the, the wood, hay, and anything that can burn away. And it gets rid of all that stuff or things start to shake until right. that which can't be shaken remains. And it makes you, it redefines you and makes you stronger. So it doesn't destroy you. It defines you. Hallelujah, Jesus. So yes, we are the child of God. And yes, we do have the power in Jesus' name. But here, you know this this uh, this thing. I want to show you a scripture here. This uh, this this test to us has been going on uh, well forever. But uh, look at look at how it played out in Jesus' day. And I only want to just quickly go through this. I don't want to take a lot of time because my wife will pick on me next week. <laughs> so look at this. It says he was he. This is uh, 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 in his hometown. And he left there and returned to his hometown. His disciples came along. And on the Sabbath, he gave a lecture in the meeting place. This is a message Bible. He made a real hit impressing everyone. Oh, we had no idea he was that good. <laughs> oh, Lord, he was a good preacher. He was, he was doing good. They said, how did he get so wise all of a sudden and get such great ability? And look what they said. But in the next breath, <laughs> they were cutting him down, saying he's just a carpenter. See, they, they, were, they were focusing on... He's just Mary's boy. 
Oh, we know this guy. What, 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 what do we do? We've known him since he was a kid, and we know his brothers, James and Justice. And look what it says. Who does he think he is? And, and that's, to me, such a powerful statement right there, that passage of Scripture, because it's, it's about challenging his identity, not his God identity in that, or, or the power of God working through him at the time, but the power of God was obvious. They said, wow, he, he, this guy's good. But then they go, just a minute, no, no, but he's just a carpenter. Yeah. And this is what happens to you and I. Here's, here's let me say this. This is why it's easier for you and I to go to a crusade where we don't know the preachers, we don't know the ministry, and they're, they're up there being holy, and, and it, we don't know all their faults and flaws in their stories, and uh, we didn't know that they were a carpenter or a, or a coal miner, hallelujah, in their lifetime. And, and so we receive by faith, and, you know, so it's, it's easier because we don't, we don't, it doesn't get messed up with, oh, I know that person. They're just, they're just a carpenter. So that, that's, that's Frank's brother. That's Frank's sister. Yeah, who are they? Who do they think they are up there? And we, we minimize the power of God in the church and in the body of Christ by familiarity. We get familiar with one another and we treat each other as common instead of looking past the natural, looking past that carpenter, looking past that coal miner, looking past that teacher, looking past the, all these people and say, yeah, yeah, well, that's, that's what we've known them for, but but getting the ability to see the God thing in each other. Right. Hey, to see the God identity and the God calling. Like all the young people that are here today, and I love our young people. I love our young people all over the world in Life Church. But, but all, uh, we could look at them and say, well, you know, they're not snot-nosed teenagers anymore. They stopped that phase of their life, and now they're, now they're, now they're nice young adults. But, but, but if you look past all the stuff, say, well, that was the one that, you know, I think, that, I think he was the one that put holes in the wall that I remember being down here <laughs> fixing holes in the walls. No names mentioned. Something, for something, <laughs> about, something about running one direction and didn't realize there was a wall there, you know. And so he said, well, you that's the first. You won't be the last. <laughs> that's just that. That's just that holy wall. Make no wall. <laughs> I just got to tell you a story. When when we were in uh, Drayton, when we had planted the church there, this is where we did all the renovations and everything. And we come on a Sunday morning. Oh, and yeah. there, there is a mark in the wall between a the mark. two bathrooms. It was a dent, but it was like this. Yeah, it was, it was the full body. So what we did is we brought all the youth in I and measured them, all. them we to measured see them. who did it. it was, I think it was Drew. So <laughs> I, I don't, but know, it was we, a whole body We smash. measured them because it, it was some so kid that was about four inches taller than me. So I just put them up against the imprint like a cartoon. It was just that thing there. So I put them up <laughs> there, so got good. them to stand until we figured out, ah, it was you. Hallelujah, <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> hey, walls are meant to be dinged. Tore down. <laughs> Tear down the wall. Ah, he's a drywaller. It's all good. <laughs> all right, but here's here was the point. It doesn't matter what happened yesterday, right. or even for that matter, what you're working through today. We need to develop a gift to see, look past the outward appearance, yes. look past what's in the natural, look past the natural skill of carpenter, whatever, mm -hmm. and see what God, see the God in you. Yeah. See what God sees and what God's doing on the inside and what we can receive through your life and through your ministry. That's and my point. And it's so important, too, that you know your identity, not yeah. just how somebody else sees you. But, you know, do you notice that before you're Ooh, saved, the devil, the nev devil never said you're not saved. That's right. Because it didn't matter to him. Yep. So when you start hearing things about, oh, you're not saved, oh, you're not beautiful, oh, you can't do this, you, you know right then and there where that's coming from and it's because he is nervous because yeah. you are power yeah. filled and you are beautiful and you are talented yeah. and you do belong to God yeah. so that's the important thing is that don't listen to the words there's the Bible says that there is therefore now no condemnation to those who are in Christ Jesus so if you feel like things are saying to you that are condemning write it off because that is not yeah from God. Yep. But here's, here's, just when you said that, I just got this, this revelation there too. Just like just that. Like that. You, it's powerful when uh, you speak. I, oh. uh, here's, uh, here's the thing. The, it's not just our view towards others, but our view towards ourselves. That's what I just said. No, well, this, the, did you? 
Well, I thought I had it said it different. Let me say it my way. <laughs> but here's the thing. I could say, you know, God says, Gary, I want you to go do something. I could say, but I'm just a coal miner. <laughs> I told you, it was, I'm just a coal miner. I can't go do that, God. I'm just that low miner. And we need, to see, we need to see the good in ourselves. Uh, do I have anything else to say? <laughs> okay, I'm going to give it back to you then. I'll just pay attention. See, it's your old life that takes center stage all the time. That old man, he just keeps rising up, and, if, and he's so familiar, we embrace that identity instead of the God identity that <laughs> Jesus is. Are you all right? I'm okay. All right, all right. Okay. This is Praise good. God. This See, this is, is live. Totally unrehearsed. <laughs> yeah, just, yeah. Yeah, there just you go. go with the flow. <laughs> go with the flow. All right. We, okay. Where are you? Can we get back? Yeah, yeah go ahead. Please do. <laughs> Anyways, back to what we were talking about, which, I mean, all right. it's all good, babe. It's, it's all good. good. Sure. All good. Sure. It's I, all was good. Just, I was just amening what you said, that's all. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Anyways, so the father allowed Jesus to be tempted because he knew he could endure it, all right? And it's the same with us. When we go through temptations, God knows that we can do it, can endure it because he doesn't give us anything more than we can handle. That is the word. So when... When he tempted Jesus to say, uh, you know, turn these, these stones into bread, what he was trying to do is, you know, you're God. Why don't you just do something for sure. yourself? Why are you starving when you could be doing this for yourself? Right. And so what he did is Satan appealed to a legitimate desire in Jesus. I mean, it was legitimate. He yep. was hungry, but he wanted him to take it in an illegitimate way, which we don't want to do that. So, but again, Jesus reminded him, as a spirit-filled man, it is written. It's written. And that's, that's the way that we need to be answering all the time, is it is written. And now you can go back into yours. Well, here, I, I, I just had another thought. <laughs> <laughs> and maybe it was you that planted that thought in my mind it again here. But, but it's, uh, it, it's, it's um, oh, no, I'll wait till later. Okay. I'll wait till after okay. because it, there's not enough time here. We're going to get, okay. Kath, if you can get okay. the team set up, we'll go back to another song here. And then I'll, I'll get into that. Yeah, if you've got okay. something, you go ahead because okay. if All I right. get into what I want to say, it's going to okay, take too long. Okay, let's just look quickly at the second temptation before right. we get into another worship song. What he did here is he was, he was tempting him with all the kingdoms of this world in exchange for a moment of worship. And how many times does that happen to people where the enemy comes and he says, if you just do this, right. just worship me, I am going to give you everything. And so many people fall for it. Yep. And we have to be very careful that we're not trying to get something the easy way. And what the devil was doing here is he, he uh, if you want to put up Luke 4 and 5, I'll just Luke read that. Luke 4 and that. 5, all right. Luke 4, verse 5. It says, then the devil taking him up on a high mountain showed him all the kingdoms of the world in a moment of time. The devil said to him, all this authority I will give to you and their glory, for this has been delivered to me and I give it to whomever I wish. Therefore, if you will worship before me, all will be yours. And Jesus answered and said to him, Get behind me, Satan, for it is written, you shall worship the Lord your God, and him only you shall serve. See, the devil knew that Jesus had come to win the kingdoms. Right. He knew that. But what he was trying to do is get him a, give him an invitation to not have to go to the cross. That, that's where just my mind was going. Yeah. Yeah. You just, just bypass the cross. If you just worship me road. right now, take the easy road. You don't have to go to the cross. Yeah. And Satan would, you know... Uh, simply give it to Jesus if Jesus would just worship him. Yeah. And it's really cool because it says here, I give it to whomever I please. Yeah. See, Satan claimed authority over the world, and Jesus never, he challenged, never challenged He it. never challenged that statement because in Genesis 1, God gave dominion to man, uh -huh. but Adam and his descendants forfeited that back to the enemy. So if you read in, you can find it in lots of scriptures, but John 12, 31, that Satan is the ruler of this world and the prince of the air and all those kind of yep. things. But see, Satan possesses the glory of the kingdoms of this world, and he can give it to whoever he wishes. Wow, that's but listen to this. Scary. So it should not surprise us oh. to see the ungodly oh. impositions of power and privilege. Wow. Because they have bowed to that. Yep. 
took and then the deal. It's, and then it's just downhill from there. It may, Lord Jesus, you know, sometimes we look at people and we go, oh, they've got it so good. Look, you know, they're rich and they're famous. But how did they get that way? And what's going on in their lives? Through all of it, no matter what the temptations are, do not try to take the easy way out mm. and do not bow to it. You stand strong, you stand on the word, and you say it is written. That's why it's so important to know the word. Because if we don't have any defense, if we're not in our word and reading it, we have no defense. And without that, the, see, the only thing that Jesus used, he didn't use his power. He didn't supernaturally, you know, right, put out right. his hand and say that. He just said, it is written. Yep. Because he knew the word. Yep. See, the devil knows the word. And he tries to twist it. And he tries to make it easy. Yep. But stand on the word of God. Know the truth of the word. Yep. And resist the devil. Yep. And he will flee. Before we go back to this, to a, a worship song here with Kathy and the team, I want to speak over this nation. I want to speak over leaders of this mm -hmm. nation in every sector and for our province and right across our country with all the turmoil, with all the stuff now, mm -hmm. uh, the, you know, the, the uh, stuff going on with police officers and things and it's all right. the, you know, the, right. uh, it's just chaos. It's chaos from both sides and, and yeah. whatever. But here's what I want to I want to I want to speak into the spiritual realm across this country. And I want to say to all of you decision makers, mm -hmm. stop compromising. Yes. Stop just making decisions in the pursuit of power. Right. Come on. Right. Don't right. stop making decisions in the pursuit of power, not just what will get you in a higher position, give you greater authority, give you greater power in the yeah. nation or get your party elected or reelected, stop pursuing power and pers I, I just speak a new conviction mm -hmm. to go across this country, Absolutely. a conviction of yes. righteousness, a, a mm -hmm. conviction of peace. Let there be a river of peace flow from coast to coast across this country. You, the prophets, Cindy yes. Jacobs and others have been in this nation many times. They've said that Canada is called to be peacemakers. So let the, let the peace of God flow across this country and let, let all leaders stop the pursuit of power and position and and get a new conviction to what is right in amen. Jesus name. Amen. 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 Kathy, take us into another amen. worship and stick around. We're going to come right back. We're going to finish off on these temptations. Amen. Oh, 
you're working Even when I don't feel it, you're working You never stop, you never stop working You never stop, you never stop working Even when I don't see it, you're working Even when I don't feel it, you're working You never stop, you never stop working You never stop, you never stop working Hallelujah, Jesus. Now, thanks, Kathy and team. That was beautiful. Praise God. Hey, here you know, we're talking about how the temptations uh, came to, to Jesus in the wilderness. But here's, here's something I want to say right now. Temptations are not trials. Here, here, you know, there's some things that we can get through by making right choices. That's mm -hmm. temptation. When, when the devil places temptation in front of us, we can get through it by our choice. Right. But 
that doesn't mean that, there are, that, that temptations are not trials, in that there are some trials of life, like when, when uh, uh, you know, the trials of, of Job or the, you know, the testings of Job or David and Goliath and many, many, many stories, or times when we are faced with financial challenges or family challenges, health challenges, those are not temptations, those are trials. And, and when a trial comes, then we need to, we need to use the word of God and, and, and uh, that. But it's different than a temptation. So for us, we're facing the uh, chaos of today. There's financial issues, health issues, family. But they're not temptations. We're all, we are faced all the time with trials that we don't have the ability to resist. Is we can't, we, we've, they're out of our control. They're not in our decisions. Yeah. Hallelujah, yeah. Jesus. So we need his help. We need his strength. We need all these, you know, the guidance of the Holy Wisdom, Spirit, yeah. the abilities, yeah. the gifts that he's given us. That's what we use all that's, that for. Uh, it, and it's got, when we're facing a trial. But we're talking today about temptations. When, when the devil puts temptation or opportunity to fall short, or to miss the mark of God. That's what we're talking about, the temptation. And look, look, at what, look what it says here in Genesis chapter 4, verse 7. If you do well, will you not be accepted? This was the Cain and Abel situation. If you do not do well, look at this. Sin lies at the door, and its desire is for you, but you, what, should rule over it. Right. And yeah. that's, that's the key right there. Is that, is that the opportunity to miss the mark and fall short of the glory of God is always right there. The devil's yeah. always trying to tempt us and entice and us. Entice so, us. Yeah, well, that's, that's actually the word uh, uh, temptation. Mm -hmm. I looked it up in the, uh, of how um, Webster's defines it. The act of tempting, the state of being tempted, enticement, right. allurement. Mm -hmm. uh, to lure and lure into seduction. It's, yeah. it's like the devil's going fishing with a lure hmm. and, and he's dangling something in front yeah, of us good. that looks so good it looks yeah. so appealing but if you bite he's going to eat you for lunch that's what's that's going right. to happen <laughs> Absolutely. so uh, so yeah. here, here's uh, and and you know we, we've been we've been talking about this for a long time you know back in the days when we wrote the power to affect change which is 24 years ago now and uh, a new book we got coming out praise god called the keys to the kingdom we're, we're, we're talking about how there's a critical point of contact. And, of course, I make light of it in the book about the uh, cake devils, you know, the, the, the devils that are in chocolate cake. I, I, don't, have to, I don't have to eat it. I just got to walk past the table, and that, that, those cake devils, they jump right into my plate, and they, and they bring their friends and everything. And, and, but it's a critical point of contact, and that's what the yeah. devil's doing. He's putting things in front of us, this lure yeah. in front of us all the time, and, and we have to make that choice make then choice. in that temptation. Say, am I going to buy into this thing and mm -hmm. fight that lure? Or am I going to say, no, I'm going to stand on what I know to be right? Well, and that's the thing is that it, you have to, just in your own flesh, you're not going to be able to fight that off. Well, that's the thing. You have to use the word. Yeah. You have to be able to fight the enemy with the ammunition yep. that God has given us yep. in his word. And just as Jesus did, it is written. Yep. It is written. Yep. Because in, the, in our own flesh, there's no way we're going to be able to resist the temptation. Well, no, but... If we just rely on ourselves and go, oh, I'm strong enough, I'm strong yeah. enough. We'll uh -uh. always fail. We'll always we'll fail. We'll always fail because the devil knows how to manipulate the flesh, our carnal yep. nature and all that stuff. But when we... See, but God gave us dominion, which is the freedom to choose and the right mm -hmm. to self-govern. So God will never... Uh, violate our freedom to choose. Our so if yeah. I want to have that chocolate cake, that's that's my decision. Yeah, it, it actually this, doesn't jump off the table. It doesn't. No, you grab it. Oh, yeah. It, it's just it's just like sleepwalking. I just don't realize I'm doing it. It's it's it, it, but but here's it it's by it's choice yeah. and and God allows us to make the choice, right. and He doesn't release the power until after we make the choice. But if we have the resolve mm -hmm. at a point of temptation, a critical point of contact, if we have the resolve to say, no, I'm struggling with this, man, but I'm saying, no, I'm not going to do that, then, then, uh, then that's when he releases the power. The power gets released, and we, can, we return in the power, just like Jesus did. Yes. Out of, but the worst thing we can do is like King Saul in the Old Testament. King Saul, when he was faced, uh, I think it's 1 Samuel 13, 
when he was faced with, uh, with pressure in his life as a leader, it was uh, chaos in, in the country and, and the Philistines were rising up power against him. His own troops were leaving him and, and, and Saul moved from faith into fear. Right. And, and, uh, and instead of obeying what the prophet Samuel told him to do, mm -hmm. uh, he did what he thought yeah. and felt that was, was right. right. If you read That's the right. account in a, a New International Version, uh, when Samuel says, Saul, what have you done? He says, well, I thought and I felt compelled. So yeah, he, he relied right. on his thoughts, his mm -hmm. carnal thinking, mm -hmm. his, his own limited wisdom, and, and his feelings. Yeah. And as soon as we rely on our thoughts and our feelings or let our emotions rule, we're moving into trouble at yes. a critical point of contact. And in Saul's destiny was altered forever at that one decision at a pr critical yeah. point of contact. And so, so when you're faced with temptation, take it serious because, because uh, uh, God, is, God, is a, God doesn't cause temptation, but he allows temptation so that we make choices. And as we make choices, it releases a new strength into our life and helps us move into our calling and our destiny. But conversely, if we make bad choices at the, at the po point of contact or when the temptation comes, it can rob your destiny and stop you from fulfilling or ever becoming what God created you to be. So, so just my point is be very careful at a critical point of contact. When sin lies at your door, the original King James says, you shall, not yes. should, shall, shall rule over it. Yeah. God has given you the ability. Yes. You make the choice, God will take care of the rest. Absolutely. He'll give you the power once the choice is made. Praise Absolutely. God. Anyway, t I just wanted to say that before no, you got that's into good. That's good. the third temptation. That's good. Okay, so now the in Luke 4, 9 to 12, you want to bring that up? Luke 4, Please. 9 to 12, all right. This, this final testing that the enemy throws at Jesus is to test him uh, through signs and wonders. And it says, then he brought him to Jerusalem, set him on a pinnacle of the temple, and said to him, if you are the son of God, throw yourself down from here, for it is written, he shall give his angels charge over you to keep you. And in their hands, you shall, they shall bear you up, lest you dash your foot against a stone. And Jesus answered and said to him, it has been said, you shall not tempt the Lord your God. Now, the interesting fact in here is that Satan says, throw yourself down. Yeah. See, Satan had no power to, to throw, throw Jesus him down. down. That's a good point. Because Jesus had to make the choice. Wow. Yep. It's the same with us. He, ha he can't throw us under the bus. Come on. Unless we make the choice. So what was happening here? Write that is down. That's powerful. Jesus, uh, the enemy says to him, Throw yourself down. Yeah. Throw yourself down because he couldn't do it himself. He could no more than suggest it. And that's the thing is that that's how, that's how the enemy works is he puts suggestions in our head. Wow. And if we can just stand wow. up and say, uh-uh, I'm not even going there. Yep. But once it's kind of like puts that thought in and once we start meditating that's on that thought, you know, it That's starts good. acting in That's our good. in our minds and in our bodies, and then we want to we want to act on it. Mm. But the thing right right then and there is to just stop it right now, and say That's not going to happen. That is good. So he's done that, and he quoted scripture to Jesus. He said, mm -hmm. "He shall give his angels charge over you." See, the devil knows the scripture. Psalm ninety one, I think. That yes, is, it is, it? and he knows the scripture. So he said, "Go ahead." Do this, Jesus. It's a great time for self-promotion and to show the signs and wonders of who you are. Mm. Because if you throw yourself off, the angels are going to catch you. They're obligated. But God, the Father, he, you know, he trusted Jesus with this. Wow. Because he wouldn't have put him through this if he wouldn't have trusted him with this. But if Jesus would have done that at that moment, it would have totally did away with our salvation. But Yeah, but look at what you just said there. I love that. That, that God the Father trusted Jesus with this test. Mm -hmm. Is that the knew? same for us? Well, of course. See, this is a thing. You if know, you if know, we use the, the right principles. Yeah, but here's the thing. If that's, it, well, I, I was going to say if that's yeah. a true principle, but it is a true principle. But that means, you know, there's days that I wish uh, God didn't trust me so much. I just, <laughs> just or you question them and say, Lord, do you really oh, trust hard. me with this? It's hard. Yeah. Can we have an yeah. easier test, God? Yeah. <laughs> but no, that's, but that's very good. 
And then the, the enemy, what he did is so many times what happens is he, the scripture is, you, is misused. It's twisted. Yep. And what, what Jesus did is when he spoke the word back to him, he rightly divided the word of truth, uh -huh. understanding yep. his context. Yep. So it's not enough to just read the word. We Don't have understand to understand it. the context of it so we know which scripture to use uh -huh. in what circumstance. Because if he would have said, throw yourself off, and he said, well, the Lord said, don't turn these stones into bread. It would That's be like, huh? Not connected. Not connected. But he said, no, you shall not tempt the Lord don't your God. God. Wow. And so now the devil, he's tried everything he can do to get Jesus down, but he can't so he says now he departs and he left him for a while and that's what will happen is you know the enemy will you know we feel victorious and he feels defeated but he will watch just like yep. what you said yep. you know sin is lying at the door yep. and so he ended his temptations he didn't get anywhere but he always the enemy will always seek opportunity at an opportune time yep. so we can never give him that opportunity see he's not stupid you know, and he's not continually going to put his limited resources into something that he knows that isn't an effective battle. And so he'll, see, he'll leave you alone. But the thing is, is that in James 4, 7, it says, submit to God, resist mm -hmm. the devil, mm -hmm. and he will flee. It's just as simple as that. Just stand your ground and say, no, I am not going there. So Jesus resisted these temptations yep. because he walked in the word and he walked in the spirit. Not because he used the supernatural power of, his, of the God in him. He actually did it as a spirit-filled man. And I just want to get that through to everybody, that we are spirit-filled yes, people. And we like can Jesus. walk in the same authority and power that Jesus did. Jesus. And what we have to watch for is this statement that I found when I was studying this. It says, too much word and, an, and not enough spirit will puff you up in a sense Ooh, of pride. And we've right. seen that. People that yep. think, you know, they just know the word but they're not they're not putting any heart behind it so too much word and not enough spirit puffs you up too much spirit and not enough word will blow you up wow with the word and the spirit wow. together you grow up wow that's good eh that's good read I it like again that. i like that too much word too much not word. enough spirit will puff you up puff you up pride too much spirit and not enough word will blow you blow up, you up. <laughs> because you can get a little crazy and with the word and the spirit together you grow, grow up. Grow up. That's really so good. So it's hand in hand. That's awesome. That's good awesome. Stuff, eh? Praise God. Praise God. You know, here, here's, uh, here's what I like to say. We're, we're uh, not always in a battle, but we are always in a war. That's when, when you're saying the, the devil went away for a more opportune time. The war didn't end. He's just saying, well, I, you know, I've lost this battle, but that didn't end the war. Uh, so we're not always in a battle. I, I get concerned when I meet Christians that are always in a battle, always, uh, always battling some devil, always battling something. But, uh, but uh, we're, we're not always in a battle. There's great times of victory and celebration and, and, and bringing in the spoils more, of war. More and, victories. Well, sure. Like, uh, yeah. In, in, so we're not always in a battle, but we are always involved in a war so we have to be diligent we gotta have watch to, for him we he, gotta watch watch he'll yeah. take advantage of, of the situations that we get in so what do we do during the time when we if we say we're not always in a battle but we're always at war what can we be doing and when adversity or adverse uh, circumstances like we've uh, been in worldwide uh, recently or any time in our life and and uh, as we we're preparing for this uh, message that we we're doing I was uh, looking up uh, looking up some stuff, and I came across this from uh, from Chris Valutin. Is that how you say his name? Valutin, Valutin, from Bethel, mm -hmm. and uh, it was uh, it was in Charisma magazine. And, and forgive me, Chris, if you ever watch this for some reason, <laughs> and I messed up your name, but uh, but it's great great teaching here. He's got some thing. He's, he he made a list here of how do we stand strong during a season of adversity or season of testing. And so this is Chris's list here. Number one, he says, do ordinary things in an extraordinary way. Yeah. And uh, and uh, we're going to break this list down here a little bit uh, uh, next week. So I won't I won't dig into it. We're running out of time today, right? Yes. We are. We are. All right. Do ordinary things in an extraordinary way. The gifts and the power of God, the presence mm -hmm. and power of the Holy Spirit is not just for when we're faced in a, in a time of battle. 
It's a, each and every day you can do things in an extraordinary way. Get the revelation yeah. of God. But even just the simple things. Simple things. Like the, you know, the ordinary things, like in this, this time we're in right now with, you know, the social distancing and, yeah. and uh, you know, uh, people that are on the front lines and, and even yeah. those that, you know, what does it take to go and get, you know, go your, do your shopping in an ordinary way, but do it in an extraordinary, extraordinary way by thanking people and just being kind. I mean, it, it's not like extraordinary, well, supernatural, wow, power, I don't have that. I, I thought you were going to say dance up and down the aisles and proclaim Jesus. And well, we could do that too. Yeah. But Prophesy even just a smile and a thank you is really good, too. That's a good start. <laughs> That's a good start. Amen. So do ordinary things in an extraordinary way. Amen. Amen. We'll break that down a little bit more uh, next week. Be a good steward of what God has already given you. Mm -hmm. You know, that's one, one of the best ways to increase is to just be a good steward of what right. he's already placed in our yes. hand. And that's not just for, you know, finances and, you know, all the natural stuff. Our right. ministry giftings and, and our whole persona and our calling mm -hmm. and our abilities, just be a good steward of yes. what you already have yeah. and outgrow your environment, just outgrow the level. And again, we'll break that down more next week. Be a good steward of what God's already given you. Number three, he says, to see every circumstance as training for your destiny. I love that. Isn't that great? Like sometimes we get into circumstances and we think that it's out for destruction. Yeah. But it's not. And that's the whole point of this is your destiny helpers. That's kind of what helper. we've been talking God about. God meant it for... Yeah. Or the what devil the, meant it for evil. evil. God turns it God around. God turns for good. it around yep. for good. So Amen. see every circumstance as training for your destiny. Come on. I, I, let me just say this. This is my thought, not Chris's. Every decision is adding something or taking yes. something from your life and from your ministry. So see every circumstance as training for your for your destiny. Number four, be positive and passionate even when you don't feel like it. Wow, you're good at that, though, aren't you? You, you are. You, I, I'm not even being, trying to be funny. You are good at it. You, you just make it. You talk about choices. I mean, you live with me, and you're still happy. <laughs> Jesus. I mean, you're a tough lady. Hallelujah. No, yeah, but, but you am. do. You make a choice. I, I, well, I've because seen it. it's a choice. 44 years. You know, been. it's it's like we can take circumstances, and we can make the worst situation and wreck your day, or we can just be positive about it yep. and just say, oh, well, yep. God is still in control. But and you do. Put on a happy face. You do. Face. <laughs> so put on a happy face and then your favorite song, which is what but doesn't kill you makes you stronger. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> <laughs> now, I, like I hey, said before, I don't know all the words to that song. It might not be a good yeah, song. Yeah, it might, it might but be a terrible song. That, that line. one line is that hers. Line. Praise God. This <laughs> line. Uh, uh, so, uh, being passionate and positive, even when you don't feel like it. Hey, when you're talking about uh, uh, this list here, I, I, I was going to make a comment back at point number one, but let, let me just say it now. Do ordinary things in an extraordinary way, Pastor Randy. I know you watch these broadcasts, but he he gets parking spots. Yeah, you're go we're going to West Edmonton Mall or we're going someplace and everybody's driving around for two hours looking for a parking spot at Christmas time. No. Randy's praying all the way there and he's going, Jesus, get me a good parking spot. And I, it's, it's, I mean, it's, it's, a, it's a faith builder it's a faith because he, he there's does. a spot. No, no, there, Jesus got a better one for me than that one. It's closer. <laughs> and he'll just drive right up almost to the front door and park his car. And, yeah. and I mean, how, how often? I mean, just almost. Every time. Yeah. And that's not an exaggeration. Yeah. <laughs> no, it is. It's, it's powerful. So do our ordinary things in an extraordinary way. Be a good steward of what God has already given you. See every circumstance as training for your destiny. Be positive and passionate even when you don't feel feel like it. Number five, pursue excellence. John says, amen. Yes. Because that's his, with all oh these broadcasts my. and all this yes. stuff, he is like here, he was telling me he was here till three o'clock in the morning, like last night or night before. Crazy. Then gets up and works a full day. And of course he's got, it's just such a good thing. He's got such an awesome wife and awesome kids or he'd never be able to do that. Amen. Amen. But, <laughs> but if there's anything I can say about yes. John Benson, it's the pursuit of excellence. Yes. And, it, and it shows. Praise yeah. God. And the last one is Matthew 6.33. Mm -hmm. Seek ye first the kingdom of God. Hallelujah. Whatever your need is, I want you to know, God help us, the federal government is not the answer to your future. Mm -hmm. 
Yep. I don't care who's running it. I'm listening to all of them, and I'm shaking my head. I'm going, no, no. Seek ye first the kingdom of God, and all these things shall be added unto you. Yep. And we'll get into that scripture yep. next week. So praise God. Amen. Isn't that good? So, again, we are open. Hallelujah. We are open. And come on down next week if you yeah. can. Don't We're need just to pre-register. Don't just need to pre-register. We'll work Don't all the worry. seating out and everything. And uh, we've got we've got Pastor Cheryl. She'll be the she'll be the the <laughs> what do we call her? Like sergeant. <laughs> Social distancing sergeant. Sergeant. <laughs> she'll be there with her little sanitizer you, pump. <laughs> you shall obey, or Pastor Cheryl will talk to you. No, yeah, it'll be good. We're 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 going to be all set up yeah. for it, and uh, love to have you all come. And, uh, and, uh, and, you know, really, we're, we're really, the responsibility is yours. Yeah. You know, we do, you do have responsibility as, you know, as the pastors of this church to see that everything is in place yeah. for public safety. But really, it's, you do what it's, you're comfortable it's with. on you guys. Wear to, a mask if yeah, you want to wear a mask. Absolutely. Some of you guys out there, I would recommend you wear a mask. No. <laughs> Did I say that out loud? <laughs> now you're... <laughs> handsome gentlemen, all of you. <laughs> Praise God. Oh, yeah. Anything else you want to say? You know, I just want to end this service with, you know, there's so many things that can lead us into temptation. Yeah. And the only thing that's going to get you through is Jesus. Yeah. Amen. So don't want to end this service without an opportunity for you yes. to ask Jesus into your life. Yeah. And, you know, the whole world is struggling right now. It's that's just a given. Yeah. Um, they, I listened to something on 930 or on Shine, F Shine okay. FM. And they said, you know, we're, we're all in the same boat in this. Yeah. But we just are each facing different storms. Yeah. And that's such a truth. So it's, you know, if you confess Jesus, just ask him into your heart. You just, yeah. it's so, you know, sometimes we make uh, coming to the Lord so difficult. But it says that if you call out in the name of Jesus, it's just saying, you know what, Jesus, this is a mess, and I really need your help. I need you, Jesus. Could you come and give me a hand? It's, it's a sign of strength. People will say, well, you know, religion is a crutch. It's for the weak. But no, it's not. It's for the strong. Yeah. Because it takes that step of you and that strength to say, you know what, Jesus, I can't do this on my own. Yeah. And we're in a time where we cannot do this on right. our own. Right. So I just want to pray with you before we go. And if you've accept, if you want Jesus into your life, please send us a text or yeah. email us or something and let us know so we can, if you're not from here, we can connect you with a good Bible teaching church, yep. uh, get you some mentors, get you yep. some discipleship, that kind of stuff. But it takes that first step to just say, you know what, Jesus, I can't do this without you. Mm -hmm. I don't, you know, you don't even have to know him. It's, it's not, well, you know, know the scriptures. It's just you're calling out to the man who we say is Jesus Christ, mm. the King of kings and the Lord, Lord of, lords. of lords. So, Father, I just thank you right now Jesus. that no matter what's going on in the world, you are on the throne. You are God. Jesus, you are Lord, the King of kings. Jesus. The, all the glory, Lord, is on you, and you want to share it with us and give us strength. Lord God. So, Father, for those that are, are sitting at home and watching this, or those in the sanctuary that are watching this, and they go, I don't really understand this. And, I, and this is a really tough time. Jesus. I just pray that they would just say your name. Yes. Because at the, name, the name of, of Jesus, yes. it's just that simple. Mm. And, Father, I pray that this would be a step they would take into a new life, yep. into new peace, into uh, a way to make better decisions, yep. a way to be able to yep. handle the storm no matter what boat they're in. And, Father, I just thank you for that. And, Lord, we just want to bless you. Jesus. We want to thank you for our time together. Thank you that things are coming back. And, Lord, we know yeah. that you have got this. Yeah. We know that this virus, yes, okay, there's, there's some facts to that, that this virus is out there, and we don't belittle that. But, God, you are stronger, yep. and you are greater. Yep. And you have given us wisdom and yep. what to do. We are not going to test you in this or tempt you in this. But, Father, we know you've got this. And with that, we can have that peace that surpasses Jesus. all understanding. Jesus. And, Father, we give you all the glory. And I just pray, Father, as we go into this week, uh -huh. that, Father, each and every one of us would have a week that is victorious, yes. a week that we, we know we're standing on the word, yes, and we God. know we've got a God that is going to get us through this. Yes, and Jesus. we give you all the praise for that in your precious name. Amen. 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 God bless you. Thank you for being with us in the broadcast. And, 
And uh, next week we'll be up on the platform and uh, yeah. and back <laughs> Just to bear with us as we get through it, all this stuff. But come out and let's do it together yeah, as a family. On. Come back to church. Yeah. We're ready and looking forward to seeing you all. Yeah. God bless you. Thank you for being a part of our day. Amen. Amen. Amen and amen.